using modeling to package in Irina. <clears throat> in this in this movie I will show you how to use modeling to package or tool in Irina. Um, we will use a two log normal size distributions of spheres to fit a small angle scattering from mixture of two powders, fine and coarse, which were measured at about 2001 on the USAC instrument. The data should be included with the uh, IRENA package itself or are available on the website. First, what you want to do is in Igor load the IRENA macros and uh, compile them. That may take a bit. Now we need to import data. From the SAS menu, we select data import and import ASCII. Um, in this tool, we can select place where the example data are. In this case, that's um, Arena example data and choose. Here's a list of all the data files which are included as examples for various of the tools of Arena. <coughs> Let's click on the test data. And if you now hit test, Igor will test how many columns of data there are. It found three columns and I can and you can preview the file. Um, in this case there's a header and then you can see it's a column one, column two, and column three, which contains the data which can add the small angle scattering. Um, the first column is Q, second intensity, third one error. Q is actually in the angstroms and just select this and those checkboxes and uh, the uh, Irina will create automatically the file names and just hit import. Down here in the history area you have described what was imported and where. So now we have in Irina, we have a folder which was created for us, SAS imported data, and this is the name of the file, <coughs> and inside are three columns of data, Q, R, and S, intensity, uh, Q vector, intensity, and error. Now we can select a modeling to package and <clears throat> this package is a bit more complicated than some of the other ones. This is a data input controls which are very similar to all the other ones. Down here in the tab area we have two sets of data controls. One is for data and the other one is for model. So let's first input some data in there. So let's select QRS which is the naming structure we used. In here now we have a choice of our data, gets properly filled in, and in here <coughs> we can, if we keep data controls in there, we have just one data tab here unless we select multiple input data sets. If we select multiple ones, we can put up to 10 data sets in there, but that gets really complicated and I suggest reading a manual in detail for that. For the simple use of one data set, let's just leave that unchecked, we can add the data. Now what happened was that the data were loaded in the tool. You can see that we have the use button here checked. Um, we have the name which we can change here. So you can put in whatever you want and it will be displayed in the, in the, in the panel here. We can scale the data in case we need it. Uh, we can use our errors, which we, error estimates which we have loaded in, but we could actually create some of our own. You can scale the error bars if you need to create larger ones. This is a Qmin and Qmax. These are the data which would be used for fitting and they are currently preset to the values of the first and last point. And this is a background. The thing which we need to do is you probably need to input a background here because that belongs to the data in this tool. And if we put a cursor on the background we can see it's about 0.12 so let's just include that as 0.12. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have the data in there. The next thing what we need to do is we have to select the range in which we're going to be fitting. The first thing is from this data, this data is a mixture of large stuff which is at low Q and fine stuff which is somewhere up here. It's not easy to see it, but there is some scattering from it here. There's also some agglomeration of the large stuff here, which you know is something which we cannot model in this tool very well. And also, it's not very well measured because there's not giving me an area for that. So let's just deal with this and this, this part. So what we can do first is let's select the range of data which encompasses only the small stuff. So we put the cursor above the area, around the Kinye area here and here. And then we can limit the Q range either by punching the values which you can see here at 
0.1046 and 0.21, but we can just simply hit a button Q from cursors, and you can see that we have now selected only the point between the two cursors. Now we can go to model controls. We have up to six populations of skitters we can put in the model. So let's uh, select the first population here. And just for simplicity, and since these are spheres and calculate really quickly, we can uh, use auto recalculate. So we check on this. And now what happened was we have created a size distribution. The default values are actually reasonably close to what we need. They're about 120 or so angstroms in sizes. That's the log normal size distribution. <coughs> the contrast uh, of alumina is 10094, even though these data are not fully calibrated. So we cannot use the volumes for anything meaningful. We can still put that in. And if we reduce the volume to a 0 0.01, we will fit the data actually pretty well. And you can actually see that the um, the uh, intensity is pretty much pretty much correct. So now we have we have um, values in here, and we have a reasonably good estimate for what the scattering from the fine stuff should be. And it happens by accident, more or less. So next, what we can do is we can go back to data controls, and we can select a wider range of data. We can go somewhere from above here. Uh, maybe 0.29 or so, so we get the full Kenya area here, and then we can select the area down. So we can read it from cursors, and you can see that the points were extended. Um, we can go back to model controls, and since it has not recalculated, we can just hit the button recalculate, and you can see how the fine stuff, <coughs> how the fine stuff uh, looks on this scale. What we need to do next is we need to model this large stuff here. From the measure, from the evaluation using size distribution, that actually represents about 1,200, 1200 angstroms in sizes. So we can come in and select the population to use. Now what we need to do is put in some um, larger mean value. Let's make it 1,000. Um, in this case, I'm actually aware that this uh, value should be somehow smaller. And of course, we need to put in 1094, which now means that we have to reduce the volume probably by about 10. Okay, so we now have something which looks reasonably large. Uh, now we probably need to go like slightly smaller. Let's make it 900. And <coughs> we should be able to now use a least square fitting to optimize the parameters. So with this, what we can do is we can actually select the volume for uh, this population to mean. And we can go in population 1 and select a volume and mean value 2. And it's a least square fitting, so you don't want to select too many parameters. And you want to select the ones which influence the positions first, most. <coughs> so in here, we can now select fit. Now you get a list here, which is check fitting parameters. It's here mainly in case that you'll be using genetic optimization. Genetic optimization takes a long time, but can sometimes get superior results to least square fitting. It's important to read the manual before, before continuing. So now what we can do is we can continue fitting. And you can see that we have actually fitted reasonably well the data. Um, you can actually, if you want to, you can zoom in this area and then you can hit read axis and this, the graph will stay because these are preset values which will now be enforced for the graph. And you can see that's actually pretty good. Uh, we can probably come in here and do a fitting for standard deviation for both of the populations. That changes somehow the width of the distribution. Also, what we can do is we can come in in the data controls and select the background fitting. And we can do fit model here. And then we can see the number of fitting parameters increase. Then we can do fit. OK, the fit is improving slightly. OK. And we can zoom again. 
And so now you can see that the fit is actually pretty good. We satisfy all of the data. There's a slight difference here, and the reason for that is really that these data here are influenced by the particle interference, which is something uh, we haven't tried to model because we use the dilute system. You could, in principle, select here one of the uh, interparticle interference parameters, which are available here, and see if you can improve on the fit. But realistically, this is a powder, compressed powder, and the interference is going to be probably quite complicated. So there may not be a really good, good model for these things here anyway. With this now, what you can do is you can save the result in a folder. <coughs> when you do that, inside the folder where the data where you now have created a radii distribution, you get the number distribution and you get a volume distribution of the particles. You also get the intensity and Q for the uh, for the model itself. You can also uh, save it in waves, which I suggest you read in the manual what it is. And you can save in a notebook. If you hit the button, there's a new notebook which is created. And the notebook actually contains an extent, uh, a lot of information. Apart from the date, it then creates what was the input data what were the parameters Q range. It then has a copy of the two graphs, and it then has a whole listing of the parameters, including the volume and mean, mode, medium, and anything else which seems to be um, which seems to be important for the result. Anyway, so now you have the results which you can then compare with the uh, with the other tools, for example size distributions. Now, in case you need more information, I'd like to draw your attention to a PDF manual, which you can open directly from the menu here, and a form and structure factor description. These two uh, PDF documents will provide you with much more information necessary for using successfully the modeling tool. Thank you.